Hello, today we're going to talk about EQ and specifically the um, EQ8 from Ableton versus the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. So why am I comparing these two EQs? There are millions of EQs on the market. These are the two EQs I know the most about. Uh, they're market leaders. Um, EQ8 actually comes with Ableton, so anyone who has Ableton um, probably knows all about EQ8 and has used it before. And the Pro Q3 is something you have to pay a bit extra for, uh, but it's definitely worth it. My opinion, Pro Q3 is better. I've been using it for the last two and a half years. Um, we had the Pro Q2 last year, uh, Pro Q3 came out this year. The, before that though, for many, many years, five or six years, I was using the EQ8 and, and I used it simply because it was good, it was free, it came out of the box and I didn't need anything else uh, until I started messing with the Pro-Q 2 and 3. Now the Pro-Q 3 is just incredible and what I mean by that is um, there's not really a sonic difference between EQ8 and Pro-Q 3. There are other videos on this if you want to know more about the differences but for me personally I don't see um, a difference in sound between the two there's no coloration or difference but what's different is the control and the functions and the features of Pro Q3 that um, indirectly allow you to make a better sounding mix anyway which is what we're all after so let's go straight to uh, Pro Q3 I'll just let you hear the song while I'm looking for it this is a song I was working on a bit earlier today it's not finished, doesn't have any EQ on it. I just put the EQ. So I put the Pro Q3 on the bass track. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is this line here where you can put your notches. You just literally double click and you've got your notches. Um, this is the same exactly as the Ableton EQ. Um, anything. Um, above increases the volume, anything below attenuates, it reduces. So uh, each notch is instantly a different color, which is nice and cool. You've got all these different amazing colors. Um, and each notch, you can control the type of signal that you have in terms of stereo placement. You can affect the left. So you just click on here. So this is just affecting the left hand side of my speaker, and this is all left hand side, so it can reduce just the left hand side or can increase the left hand side of the volume of that frequency um, stereo placement is obviously the right hand side stereo is the default then you've got mid and side okay so if you want to kill if you've got a bass track and you want to kill all of the side information on the bass track it's just there at your disposal you can let's just do it now let's do a low cut and slope we just make a very steep slope just kill anything below say 100 let's listen to it so all of that information most of that information should be chopped away at, in terms of the stereo signal um, which makes everything below this frequency a mono and to do that you can see how quick that was that was really easy and quick you can do the same thing with ableton's eq8 but i find this easier and quicker Okay, so that line stays here because that is just a stereo, that is just the side signal. But you can on the line you can do you can add a, a mid, you can chop the mid up. Okay, so you've got a mid, you can add as many as you want. You can um, chop up the you can um, put in a uh, sorry, we can put in a right hand. Yeah, on the right hand side, sorry, on the right uh, speaker, you can do a low cut on the right speaker for whatever reason. And you can just keep going and going and going and it's all on the same preset. You can do just a, a lump, a lump of really interesting things. It's got amazing defaults, uh, sorry, presets, you know, sort of or your typical sort of presets that you need. Um, yeah, so it's really cool and very quick to use. Uh, each of these notches can be affected uh, by gain. You can increase the gain here. Um, you can change the frequency and on the gain, you can you can pinpoint the EQ. You can make it as wide as you need. You have complete control. And if you change your mind about that particular notch, it wasn't supposed to be stereo, it's supposed to be mid. You can change it, the information that it affects here 
very, very quickly. Okay, you can also choose the shape very, very quickly. So you can do all of this in Ableton, but in my opinion, it's a bit slower, a little bit clunkier, and I'll show you why in a sec. So let's just go back to our default clean, clean um, um, thing. And basically what we're gonna do now is show you the other features that it has that are really cool. Um, so it does this side chain feature. So if you have a look here, you can side chain to any track on Ableton. So for example, you can side chain to the kick or do a pre effect side chain. Um, this doesn't actually side chain, it just brings that signal in, but it is the starting point for a side chain. So on the analyzer, let's click side chain so you can see straight away the the shape of the kick, okay? And this red thing here is, I'll just press this button, I'll just switch it off and put it back on. That is your collision. That's where you've got some frequency clashes, okay? So that's another cool thing that I just don't think Ableton does, but it's very, very useful. Now, the other thing you can do is when you see the analyzer, you can see the side chain track, you can also see all the other tracks that ProQ is currently on. So you can see what's happening very easily and very quickly, and you can see the clashes. Okay, so you can then say, oh, there's a bit, a lot of red there. Let's go and do something about it. So for analysis, it's just ridiculously good. Okay, any of these tracks that you choose, we we'll just go back to the side train ch chain track. You can do a function called EQ match. Now EQ match just takes the input of both the uh, tra track you're on, which is the bass track, and the track that you have, you're looking at, which in this case is the side chain track, the kick and does an EQ match and it does what it thinks is an it does what it thinks is a good EQ. Uh, let's do that. So we record that. Okay, so there that is. Let's just make this a bit bigger. So it's got it's got suggested points where there are clashes and you can just literally go in and do what you what you need to do to you know reduce or increase uh, the clashes between those suggested points okay so it's very very cool for that So you can actually reduce, increase the accuracy of all the frequency clashes. You can go to town, really. Or you can do something less accurate, but it's actually much better. So, uh, for example, this one here, for me, I'm not seeing any red color here, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna leave that alone. But here there's a substantial amount of red. So what you can do is select the notch that was selected here. Okay. You can do this make dynamic function. And then on the gain, you can set the gain to be automatic. And So I'm now ducking, now ducking the bass wherever it hits that frequency. And I can control the Q and... Okay, so that's another cool thing it does. Let's just go back to a clean signal. So when you can see the shape here of the kick, you can actually just set a dynamic Q and just do it manually without the EQ match, which is what I do anyway. And I just reduce what happens here. I've got this space here, which reduces. 
dynamically, but then you can um, associate that as a side chain signal to the kick. You can go to the bottom threshold or really close to the, to the top. You may just want to do it for the side or the mid. You may want to reduce the mid. I'd suggest doing it only on the mid because at this point here, you shouldn't really have any side information and the mid makes it more precise and more precision gives you a better sound. Okay, so Pro-Q3 gives you that precision that you need really to get that clear sound and it's just ridiculously good for that. So let's just go to uh, quickly go to the Ableton stock EQ. Just thinking about it, I probably should have started with the, <laughs> the Ableton EQ, but that's fine because it might look disappointing to anyone who's seen the Pro EQ, uh, Pro Q3, but it actually isn't a very, isn't disappointing. It does the job, okay? So just like the Pro Q3, you can you can move these notches just like the Pro-Q3. And just like the Pro-Q3, it has left and right signal and mid and side. And you select M or S. So for example, we want to put a notch in there, get rid of all the side signal, we can do that. And it has this thing that was really useful, which is to, you can actually hear the changes that you made. Let's start again. as you're making them. So that's pretty cool. So if you want to add another notch, you just have to, you've only got eight notches. That's the first problem. You've, well, it's called EQ8. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't have, you know, unlimited like the Pro-Q, um, but you can add up to eight notches and you can put them anywhere you want and you can change the shape. So for me, this is pretty easy but it's not as easy as the Pro-Q3, okay? So that's one of the things I find um, that it makes it a little bit better. The other thing is if you double click here, you can actually see a pretty beautiful, massive version on the screen here. And you have a few more gain, you have a few more options here um, for each um, of the notches, which is really cool. Um, but pretty much that's it, you know, I think, it just does the job as a EQ. You can. It's very very low latency. So is Pro Q3. This is, but this is very very low because it's part of Ableton, and I think as a sort of a short term sort of quick and nasty sort of quick and dirty, not nasty, quick and dirty EQ. It's pretty good. Um, you can have as many instances of it as you want. You can duplicate that as many times, and that shouldn't affect the CPU. What it doesn't have is those cool little things that I was just showing you before in terms of the comparison with the other tracks. It doesn't show you what the other tracks do. That's perfectly fine. You can use your ear. You don't need to visually see um, what the other tracks do, but for me that helps. And the other thing it doesn't have is the dynamic control. Okay, so it doesn't um, change at all. These EQs don't change. Um, with comparison to other tracks. Okay, what you can do is you can automate these. Um, let me just show you. You can automate each notch. Let me just get to automation mode. So you can say this is number five. You can you can automate the notch. Let's actually just make it a bit easier to see. Just keep one in there. So just bring the, oh, I just got rid of all of them, didn't I? So just bring the EQ8 back in. So you can automate any of these notches. So on track, on number one here, I can automate the gain. So I can do things like that. 
and you could do the same thing for Pro-Q, but so let's just listen, just look at it. And you can also automate the frequencies. That should be a bit easier to see. You can see that moving. So there's a level of automation and control but for me, it's much harder to do anything more than that on the EQ8. So um, in um, summary, um, EQ8 does a job sonically, sounds to me very similar to the Pro-Q3. The Pro-Q3 just has more functions in it. And if you're willing to pay a little bit more, I'd recommend you get it. Um, there are other EQs out there, of course, that you can look into, which I haven't reviewed. Um, I've used the Neutron EQ, um, but I haven't used many others. I've used the Sound Toys EQ, which I like actually, but really for an overall um, clean, low CPU and high function experience, go with the Pro Q3. Thanks everyone.